Hello and welcome back to the channel. My name is Eddie Jennings from EJSLLC.com. This video is going to be exploring what the end user experience is when using the Zoho Assist remote access utility on um, Linux workstations. Before I dive in, I want to thank returning subscribers for checking out another video. And I also want to invite everyone, if you enjoy the content of this video, to click like. And if you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you click that subscribe button and ring the bell when you do, so you can be aware when new content is available. As you know, I participate with the Mangolasi.it community a good bit, and there was a thread there that was about Zoho Assist, and there was a person that was trying to make it work with Ubuntu and was having some problems. So in that thread, I, um, I mentioned that I don't recall it being an issue, and that I will do some tests just to see if, if it still works for me. And I figured at the same time, I would make a, a video for all of you so you have an idea of um, what the end user experience is like for using Zoho Assist. So if you're trying to decide if, if this is the right tool for, for you to use, then you know perhaps my video will be able to give you some insight to that. To let you know, the, the distros that I tried these steps on include um, Ubuntu 2010, uh, Linux Mint, the current version, which I think is version 20, if I remember off the top of my head. I also tried it on Fedora, both just the, the default spin as well as their KDE spin. And I used um, Pop! OS as well as CentOS 8 just to s see if I could replicate these steps. And I was s successful with, with all of the distros. So without further ado, let's jump in to, to see how this looks on Ubuntu and then Fedora. Here I have an Ubuntu 20. 10 install and let's go ahead and make the link for Zoho Assist and we'll use the browser for your users you can either have them put in the full link there or just join.zoho.com and have them type in the numbers giving the link plus the numbers what all that will do is just populate session ID already for you this Ubuntu. Now this is what I really like about how Zoho Assist is handling um, the Linux installs because I mean, even though this is designed to be a one-off report set uh, report one-off remote session it is still there's still an agent that needs to to function with this and sometimes I think there's a misconception that just because a person is a Linux desktop user, they are well-versed and comfortable with the command line. Maybe if the person is a system administrator, perhaps. But, you know, I, I wouldn't assume that, that, that they necessarily are comfortable with command line or know what to do. So I like how this is presented because what you can tell your user to do is click the little copy button ask them to open the terminal, which shouldn't be too difficult to do on um, any modern Linux desktop. Within most uh, terminals, they can right click, and paste, and most desktop distros are going to already have wget installed. What this is going to do is download the um, agent executable to their home folder, and then you'll have them copy and paste the second command, which is going to set that as executable and um, launch the actual application and then they will have a pop-up that comes up that says you're about to join a remote session you'll tell them to click join and here is your remote session so as you can see I have the VM here on the left hand side I have Zoho here on the right hand side I'm just going to open another tab Echo testing Zoho. And we see that working. So from my experience, this is this is pretty painless and it's easy for, for users to, to work with. There are a couple of things I do want to show you. One is let's say that you have to restart a user's computer you know, as a part of whatever support you're having to do. So I'm going to go ahead and start that restart and what you will see is this tab in your browser is basically going to freeze which makes sense because the, the the connection is killed and the thing to remember is or at least in my experience this is not going to automatically 
reconnect, even setting this to, to run as a service, which if you were to do that click here, what you would see on the other side is it's going to ask for uh, them to, to put in password for sudo. But even with that running as a service, I haven't seen it automatically reconnect. The key is you don't want to end this session here. So once they're back, they can log in. And once they've logged in, you can tell them to go to their home folder. And then they can just double click the connect icon because it was already set to executable. And it's specific, the, this agent is specific to your session. And after a few moments or so, you'll be reconnected. And let's just let's open Firefox. And you're good to go. The one other thing I wanted to show you is what would happen if, let's say you finished your session, everything is fixed, user leaves the session, right? And you will see customers left the session, you'll end now, then you'll close the session. The last thing that you'll want to do is end the session here. Because until you do this, what could potentially happen is the user can double click and they would reconnect to the session. Now this isn't necessarily a problem, but it's, it, it is the, the, the reality. So if you were to close that and then actually end the session, what should happen, famous last words in IT, should, right? When they try to reconnect, they'll see session ID expired. And typically what I will tell a user to do is at the end of our support session, I will actually have them delete this agent simply because it's not going to be valid anymore. And it's also just, in my opinion, good habit to, to clean up after yourself when you're done doing support with a user. If you've ever had to make like temporary files and things like that, you know, have the, have everything cleaned up. Here I have a Fedora 33 install, and this is just the, the basic spin that you can get. This isn't the KDE spin or sentiment or anything like that. I went ahead and made a session for the remote support. So we'll go into a browser. And just like with the Ubuntu support session, we'll do join.zoho.com. We will give this the access, or rather the session ID. I'm going to call it an access code. I'll call this Fedora. And we'll join the session. Just like with Ubuntu, it'll give you the instruction for downloading the application in the terminal, setting it to executable, and running it. So we'll do those steps here. Now, there is a gotcha with Fedora and CentOS and anything else that runs Wayland by default, and you are about to see it. So once I make this executable and run it, it's going to say we're not able to do this because it uses Wayland. And I'm not going to go into the technical details why. The short version of the story is Wayland would handle screen sharing differently than Xorg. And this application is designed to, to work with that Xorg environment. So it does have a link for how to disable Wayland. I personally would not have a user do this. Rather, if you're supporting a Fedora install and it is using Wayland, what I would recommend that they do is actually sign out, not uh, power off or anything, but just sign out. And then when they try to sign in again, They'll click their name, have them click the gear button, and it's, it's similar on CentOS as well, and just have them choose Xorg. The beauty of it, once they've done that, and we're back on the desktop, then you have already had them download the agent, and we've also already set the agent to be executable. So all they should have to do is go into Files, and then double-click Connect, and then after a few moments, you'll be connected once again. 
Now, there's one strange thing that I've been able to replicate somewhat of the time. It hasn't been 100% of the time. We'll see if it happens in this video. Of So you have the session. I'm actually going to move this window over to the side here. And for some reason, the session just vanishes. And we're going to see if it happens here. I didn't have, so far, we're looking good. Going to activities. Yep. So the session hasn't just died. When I was doing some earlier tests with this, sometimes I would have the, just the, the session would vanish. And so on the, um, on the Zoho Assist side, you, know, you would just have a frozen screen. And one way that I mitigated that was once the Zoho Assist session was reestablished, I would just start a chat and that seemed to, to prevent it. So also it appears just maybe moving that, that window around helps. I didn't have this problem 100% of the time and obviously here in the video, oh, there it went. So there went my session. All right, let's double click. And I'm not sure if this is just a bug for Fedora. I wasn't able to, to make this happen with Ubuntu as well as the, the other um, Debian-based distros that I looked at, Mint and Pop! OS, but Fedora and CentOS, that that was a thing. You saw it crash there. And I'm sure I could go into um, logs and such and, and, and maybe see why it crashed, but it, it it was a thing. So let's try one more time. And what we're going to do is I can do file transfer because I don't actually have file transfer available. And you see the file transfer vanished there. But I'm going to start a chat window. And we'll see if this actually stays put and does not, the agent does not crash. And so far we're looking good. Let's go into the terminal. And again, I have the VM on the left hand side and Zoho Assist on the right hand side. And we'll do our little echo testing Zoho. So you did see the, the issue in action with Fedora. Again, I'm not 100% sure what's what's going on with that. But other than that being an annoyance, this seems to, to work decently well for Fedora. One thing I do suggest that you do is if you're in an environment where the user is using Wayland and you do whatever tasks there are to um, to temporarily disable Wayland or go into the, the Xorg session, I would recommend reverting whatever change you did. So in this example here, once we're done, I would have the user log out. And then have them log back in with the with Wayland. And the reason being for that, or in this case, just log in with uh, GNOME. And the reason for this is, I'm not sure if this is still true in Fedora 33, but in other editions of Fedora, whatever you logged in with last, either the Wayland or Xorg, it wouldn't remember that for future logins. I imagine a lot of your end users that you're supporting might not care about whether or not you're using Xorg or Wayland, but just as a good practice, if I'm ever having to make a change um, in a support session specifically to allow the support session to happen, I try to revert those changes back to whatever normal is so that way there's no you know, surprises or extra changes that are being done to the user's environment. So I hope that provided you some insight as to what the end user will experience on Zoho Assist when you're trying to connect to a Linux machine. Thank you for taking the time to watch. As always, if you enjoyed the content of the video, make sure you click like. And if you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you click that subscribe button and ring the bell when you do so you can be aware of when new content comes available. And I'll see you the next time.